Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to go over three areas that are very challenging to swedge on clarinet. I'm going to show you how to fix them. Before we get to that, I do have a couple of announcements. We have a hashtag. Make sure you take this hashtag for today. Put that in the comments below. That's going to allow you to get 15% off. We're going to do a drawing. You get 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023. And we have a bunch of them coming up uh, next week on February 15th, a day course, a virtual day course on saxophone key fitting. That's going to go over all sorts of high-end key fitting on saxophone. And this is partially why we did our clarinet swedging today, because this is going to relate to that. And we also have a day course coming up on saxophone modifications all of the interesting things that we do for professional players on their instruments uh, we're going to show you how we do that on march 2nd that's a virtual course and then on march 6th through 9th an advanced saxophone repair course we'll get into all of the different types of advanced techniques that we use in the sax pro shop that is a hand that is a hands-on uh, in-person course march 6th through 9th and of course for you clarinet folks july 17th through 20th down at the bottom there uh, that is our hands-on, in-person clarinet basics done right, where we'll also go over clarinet key switching. So start marking your calendars. Uh, we have a couple of stops that we did. Uh, we went to, well, we have a couple coming up. Uh, we went to Covington, Georgia last weekend. Kurt was out there talking about the Neopads with some fabulous other technicians. If you haven't been to a regional Napper clinic, there's a lot of ideas shared there, so make sure that you sign up. The next one is coming on February 18th, so on the 17th, we'll be at the Red Wing Advi Advisory Committee. That's in Red Wing, Minnesota at the Southeastern Technical College there, uh, where there's a lot of budding repair technicians. And then on February 18th, a Napper Regional Clinic, Ryan, will be there showing how to install the Neopads along with some excellent other clinicians from the Midwest. So make sure that you Sign up at napper.org. You don't have to be a member, but you do have to register. Yes. The other thing that we have is a winner from last week's hashtag contest. Right. Um, winner is Noel Coetzee. Noel, congratulations. Send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com. I will get you your discount on any of the courses that we have coming up. All right, so, oh, and yeah, make sure you take that hashtag, right. put in the comments below, like, share, subscribe. It really helps us out. Thank you very much. All right, so, uh, Leroy, we have... This is the viewer requested video. We do yes. a bunch of different swedging work, but there are three areas on the clarinet that can be difficult. That's the, the F sharp key, yes. the upper trill key that often sleeves together, mm -hmm. as well as the A flat throat tone weird post on vintage LeBlancs. Yep. Um, let's just go over, a lot of these use the same tools, so let's go over the tools for all three jobs that we're gonna do yep. today. Sounds good. So first of all, right here in front of us, we have our hinge two cutter set. This will cover any key fitting and uh, key facing um, challenges or jobs that you have. We've got a digital caliper. Um, we've got pipe cleaners, Ultimax key oil. We've got some lapping compound, um, the random keys from this instrument. We have our, for this job, we have our 3.5 millimeter thin jawed blue handled key swedgers. And then we have both sizes, medium and small of our uh, Music Medic Parallel key swedging pliers. Also have our uh, Parallel duck bill pliers, our post fitting pliers, and our screwdriver, and then again, the clarinet joint we are gonna be working with today. All right, very good. So that's the tools that we have. Let's go over the job number one, which is yes. the F sharp key. Okay. Tell, tell us about the challenge of this key and how to fix it. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna show you would be, I'll say the prime, I'll say the prime example of what a normal swedging area would look like. Okay. So I'll take, the, I'll take the rod out of the key. So as you can see here on the edge, there's a little bit of a shoulder right there on that key. Mm -hmm. That's normally where you would swedge, right? You would just put the rod back in there. And in this case, because again, it's not very big. You're gonna to want to use the thin jawed. You want to use the thin jawed swedgers. Okay. You would just basically go in there, do the crimp and rotate, crimp, release and rotate. Normal. That's normal. Straight ahead. Okay. How, however, there are plenty of clarinets that look like this. There is no shoulder on that edge, on either edge, on mm -hmm. either side. So, what are you to grab? Well, there's really nothing to grab on that outside edge, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, you would be swedging basically from the middle right here, the inside of the key. Um, in this case, it's actually kind of nice because if you look, here is the spring 
the spring attachment on that key. So it's under this key touch. So that leaves this whole area nice and open where you can um, take the, the small parallel swedging pliers and, okay. release, and just, again, heat, um, crimp and release, crimp and release, crimp and release. However, if you look at this key right here, see how the little spring spud is right in the center? Okay, I'll, yes. I'll rotate it right there so you can see it better. That makes it very difficult to swedge while you're in the center. That's where, the, that's where these little guys will come in again, the, the thin-jawed ones. All right. So again, if there's no shoulder on these keys and you have the little spring spud in the center, you can take those, uh, these are the three and a half uh, millimeter. We also have four. The five would probably be too big for clarinet. So yeah. three and a half and four would be your, would be your pliers depending on brand. Uh, you would just go in there again and um, crimp, release and rotate, crimp, release and rotate. And then just keep it and then with like any normal key swedging fashion, you would just go back to the posts, make sure that the make sure of the fit, and then make sure when you are, I'll say, done swedging, that it's actually fitting quote unquote too big. So when you do the key facing, it'll be perfect when you fit it in there. Okay. Very good. So that's the first challenge. Let's go on to the next one, which is fitting the upper trill keys that ah. leave together. Yeah, this is a this is a very interesting one. I don't want to say dangerous, but it but you have to be careful how you actually go about the process. Okay. So if you look here, there's one post that connects these two keys. There's one rod that goes through both. Uh, two brands off the top of my head that I know that have a single rod per key is um, a lot of LeBlanc products, and Bakun does it a lot too on some of their higher end instruments. Okay. Uh, but most, mo almost any other brand on the market will have this type of design on it. All right. So in order to go about doing this, you'll want to unscrew the rod and then remove it. Put that rod right there, and then I will take that off. And as you can see, these two are connected. And then, unfortunately, especially you can see it really well up up close to my fingers, but there's a lot of play in that whole mm. section, right? Slightly undesirable. So the way to do that, and I'm going to take this apart so I can show you these two key sections here. So there's two there's two of those key sections there. And you can see the lower one in my left hand. The hinge tube is really small. The other one is a little bit bigger, obviously, because it has to go over that other one, right? Okay. So the, the key thing to do here is to start with the small. The, so basically the inner, the inner part of the sleeve. Okay. So you'll take that key. You'll take this, the rod that goes through it, put the rod right in that key, and then you can take the small parallel swedging pliers and the smallest hole in this case will work and then again just like any normal swedging thing you would crimp release rotate crimp release rotate crimp release rotate making sure that you're staying parallel uh, perpendicular to this to the hinge tube once you check the fitting between this key and the posts and making sure again that it's on the on the bigger side so it doesn't like slide in really easy okay you're quote unquote done with this key right now this, all right now the second part of this is sliding that outer the outer sleeve onto that key and again taking that rod and inserting the rod always make sure the rod's in the inch tube when yes. You switch. yes good tip because if not, ooh, danger, danger, danger zone, danger. You can actually cr uh, crush, ovalize the the hinge tube, and it's just bad news city. Mm -hmm. um, so now we got the the rod back in there, and we have the key section together. So I have the I have the medium parallel swedgers at this point. Um, depending on brand, uh, you'll either use the the center or the or the largest hole. So either the four and a half or the five, okay? So from here, again, same idea. You'll crimp, release, rotate, crimp, release, rotate. This is a little bit different because usually the outside tube, the outside tube of this hinge, of this um, tubing on this outside key, is usually a little bit thinner than that inner one. So it's a lot easier to crush and damage than the other, than the, than the inside part. So again, just when you're doing it, be very, very careful. Make sure you apply enough pressure 
but that you don't over, you don't use too much pressure to do it. Okay. And again, do the normal swedging part, making sure that you're testing the areas between the posts. Once it goes in between those posts on the, I'll say on the firmer side, you should be good to go as far as the actual swedging part. Here is the other important part of this whole factor is when we use the hinge tube cutter set. Again, when we face any key, and when you're, when to finalize your swedging, this is the final step to face the hinge tube to make it flat. Okay. The important part of this is to make sure that this key section is together when you, when you put, when you actually face those keys. All right, so we're making sure both keys are together tight. Tight, and the important, the reason why you're doing that is to make sure that you're actually removing the same amount of material and that the surface is actually perfectly level on both parts. Because okay. if you do them separately, you could have it shorter, like on a micro scale, mm -hmm. it could be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, and then there'll still be some weird play and it won't feel as good as it should. All right. And then once you're done, obviously with that, you would put it back together and then you're good to go on that section. All right, very good. So that is the trill key. Now let's go to the third challenge, which, third challenge. which was the A-flat throat tone, uh, the A-flat key. Often you see these kind of weird posts on mm -hmm. yeah. vintage LeBlancs. Um, tell us a little bit about what you think about this key and how to fix the challenge of switching it. Okay, so if you look... I'm gonna, I know the key is on here, but I will show you this part. So this particular one is on the A flat key side, but it's actually on the A on the throat tone A key. So here's the little nubbin that sticks off of that post. When I remove this key, you'll see it a little bit clearer. Uh, what ends up happening is this post right here is what I would consider a compound post, where basically two rods thread into this area. Okay, so. My, this may not be fact, but my, my thought of why they did this design was they probably had a whole ton of those little throat tone A keys laying around and they didn't want to lose them. So they're like, oh, we'll just, we'll just modify that little nub so we can just use these keys and then switch it out later. Okay. Again, reasonable maybe guess. not fact, but it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a reasonable explanation why they did something mm -hmm. a little bit, I'll say on the weird side. Mm -hmm. So in order to go after this, after this area, again, you just remove the rod. And then I'll show you that post without that key so you can really see it. So there's the little nubbin sticking out of there. This is a regular post. So it's just round on the top and everything else. Here's that nubbin post where it's basically got the post where it's got that little bit of thing sticking out of the, out of the post itself. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about this post is that on this side here, there is no way to actually get through this thing. This is like sealed off. So there's no way to push anything through that side. It's sealed off. So there's no way to access any of these threads through that post. Now to, now to basically do the post fitting on this thing, again, it's like you would do any normal post fitting. You get this, and again, when you're doing clarinet stuff, you're gonna want the small post fitting pliers. Um, you would take those pliers, and again, you would do both sides okay. normally. But in this case, because this side really doesn't do anything because it's blocked off, you're not going to have to worry about that side, which is great. Okay. So you only have to worry about the other side. So the important part is to make sure that, you, that you're on it very firm and sturdy and that to, to apply pressure and crimp it, but not too much. And then just do the normal rotation. So, Libra, well, can you show that to them? Because, you know, we do this a lot in the saxophone world, yeah. but just show us the, the using the technique of the post-fitting pliers yeah. one more time. So, so you're I'm not squeezing super hard. Not super pliers. hard, and I'm just squeezing it, and then I'm just rotating a little bit. Not a lot. Um, different, I mean, you could, you could leave it in one spot and crimp it, or you can do it and rotate it. Okay. Uh, both things, both... Both applications of both techniques are fine. Um, Go ahead and show them the plier jaw too. Yeah. I, so this jaw has a ball and it's a stainless steel ball and that's going to swedge the actual post head itself. So this side here, the inside of that plier, it's hard to see a little bit, but you can kind of see it. This is actually rounded just a little mm -hmm. bit. So this is, so the idea is the steel is going to be as hard, if not harder, 
than the post or the material that you're actually facing or mm -hmm. that you're actually doing post work on. This one, this is our, what, third, second or third generation of this plier? Yes. Um, we decided to do brass on this because it's obviously softer material, so it won't mar the outside of the, of the post that you're actually not working on. So, Leroy, I have a question. When you are switching that, I think that's the A key mm -hmm. on the A flat post. Yep. Uh, you're switching the key as normal to increase the length, and then yes. you are facing the post to have them fit tight together. Correct. If you don't have enough length, what else can you do to make the key feel tighter mm. in that situation? That's a good question. And we actually, um, I believe we did a video on this one a couple months ago, I believe, where um, oh, yes. where where either you either don't have the opportunity to swedge, where it's like literally impossible, or if you've swedged to the point where you can't swedge anymore, um, where we've made um, Teflon donut basically Teflon rings. Okay. And we sell we sell three different thicknesses of Teflon. It's super easy to make them. All you need is some punches, whether it be like a rotating hand punch or actual individual punches where you would use a hammer. Super easy to make. You basically just make little donuts and then slip them in between the post and the key. And that um, one Teflon is nice and slidey. Okay. So super technical term this morning. <laughs> sure. Um, but it's super slidey and it, it will it will hold up to a lot a lot of I'll say beating, and the other thing too is if it does wear down it's super easy to, uh, super easy to remove too. So and I'll put a link to that that video below. Let me just make a note of that uh, Teflon video. <laughs> uh, so but Leroy for this this yeah. final procedure you're swedging the key and yep. then you're fitting the post. Correct to get a tight feel. Right. And the other the other important thing too is, other than obviously post fitting on this thing, is whenever you have the opportunity, and this is a great one, because this is a, again a compound post, so a couple rods or a couple rods go to this, is whenever you can anchor a post you're working on to something else, go ahead and do it. Because like any any woodwind, like clarinet, oboes, anything like that, usually when they're wood, those posts are screwed into the body. So if you start doing work to that post, it actually could crack the seal or whatever as far as being threaded into the body, could, okay. could make it loose. So anytime you can anchor it like this and make it stronger and easier to work with, it is highly recommended that you do that. Now the other question I have for you is, how do you keep from marring keys mm, yeah. uh, in the swedging process? It's more of a general question. Sure. Um, Anytime you do some sort of key work where there's metal on metal and you're you're basically, again, mechanically doing something to the instrument, it's, I will I will say, impossible to not, to not leave some sort of, lack of a better term, mark that sure. you've actually done some work in that area. It's 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 impossible. I mean, you can make it very minimal, but it's impossible to not have any sort of sign that you were actually in there doing something. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to help eliminate excessive signs of work in that area. Um, main thing would be to uh, the key area that you're working on. So if you're working on this hinge tube here, make sure that it is very, very clean. And then the other thing would be the pliers that you're working with, the inside of the area where it's swedging, make sure that that area is very, very clean. So the inside of the draws, make, their, make sure they're clean. Yes. Okay. Is it is it harder to swedge clarinet keys than saxophone keys? I know we do a lot of saxophone work mm, here, yeah. but does the nickel plating have anything to do with that? It does, actually. Um, even though it's just plated, nickel is far harder than brass. Um, so even though it's just plated, anytime you're working with nickel, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get that swedging or the, I'll say the metal to actually move. So whenever you're just doing the, like the, um, the, the, the crimp and rotate, crimp and rotate, you might have to do a little more force on these keys, clarinet keys, or even nickel-plated saxophone keys mm -hmm. than you normally would with uh, just a brass key. Okay. 
Very good. Well, Leroy, thank you so much for that excellent demonstrations, all three of them. Uh, if you guys have any questions about swedging on clarinet keys, make sure you put them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe and share this around. It's very helpful for us to keep us doing this. Take that swedge clarinet hashtag, put that in the comments below too. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2023, including our February 15th uh, saxophone key fitting course. We're going to do a drop in with Ryan next week. He will yeah. be uh, teaching that course. So we'll drop in and say to say hello to them, uh, to all the students and Ryan as well. Maybe give you a little taste of what's going on there. And then the week after that, we're going to be yep. shimming some Neopads. So folks had some questions about uh, how to make the Neopad spuds a little taller. So yep. we'll show you a good technique on how to do that. If you have any questions, reach out. Um, that's going to do it for now. So until next time, happy repairing.